Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche niche website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Roundtable Podcast, we've got the Nightcap Meister, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? Good, Mark. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Excellent. Um, We've got the Big Papa. I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are you? I'm good. Happy to be uh, back on the show this week. Uh, fantastic. Fantastic. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good. Good. Good to see you. We got Bearland Aaron Williams. Bearland. Hey, everybody. Good to see you. We've got the most dangerous woman in the country, the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Hi, Mimi. Hi. How's it going? Good. Good to see you. And of course, Last, but certainly not least, you know him, you love him, the brain, the professor, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com, and most importantly, if not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School, led by Scott Todd. So if you want to learn how to really uh, go up that mountain of land investing worth the Sherpa, the brain, the Professor Scott Todd, schedule a call. All you have to do is go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training, get on a call with the, the Nightcap Meister, Scott Bossman. Odds are he'll be sober. And the Zen Master, Mike Zeno. So this week's roundtable discussion, Bearland Aaron, is what? Uh, well, it's been brought to my attention that there's a little bit of debate um, as far as land moto ads go, um, is it best to put uh, more like a lot of detail in, kind of tell everything about the property, um, you know, just give them everything so that they, you know, have all that decision to really, or all that information to really make a decision on whether to contact you or not? Or is it best to, you know, create some mystery, um, you know, leave a little bit out? Um, to kind of create that, that mystery, so to speak, um, to make them want to contact you. Right, right. So when you're creating your land moto ads, is best practice typically going to be give more information or, and I think we can all agree on a Craigslist ad, you want to give less information, correct? Everyone's sort of shaking their head. But I'd love to hear what everyone's doing with their land moto ads and also, if Scott Todd has some analytics on this as well, uh, <laughs> the Nightcap Meister, Scott Bossman, what, what's your take on this? So I, I have been as detailed as possible on Landmoto and, uh, you know, possibly uh, may need to change that. I, I don't know. I think uh, the, the reason for me being as detailed as possible, I think, is because they're there is so much land being presented there uh, that that I want the customer who lands on my page to be as informed as possible. However, maybe that's not uh, encouraging them to reach out to me if if I'm laying it all out on the table. So I think that's this is a good discussion and I'm hoping to walk away with uh, something useful. Yeah, how about that's what I've been doing. Uh, the technician? I feel like he would have a, a technical way of doing this, Eric? So I think that, um, you know, I guess I look at my marketing as, you know, kind of who is the audience and, and who am I talking to? So first of all, I think that the people that are on Land Moto and looking at land there, number one, they're looking for land. Um, number two, they have a certain level of understanding of, you know, buying land and the way that we sell land on terms and things like that. Um, so I think ultimately they're an educated, um, buyer and therefore I think it's important to give them all the information they need, um, from, you know, coordinates to details on the property, the type of zoning photos, all those kinds of things, because, um, they're already, they're your target audience. They're who you want to talk to. So, um, by providing the information they need and hopefully some calls to action. Um, they're gonna reach out to you and um, you know, know 
already what they need to know about that property. So they should be that much better of a lead for you. Yeah, I, I like that, that you know your, your audience on Landmoto um, and therefore that's going to help guide you in how you're going to craft that ad. Uh, Mimi, what's your take on that? I have run marketing ads on Landmoto and in Facebook too. And I've noticed definitively that the leads are much better if there's more information on those two platforms. If you give them the information on where it is and all of that, then they don't ask you the, you get these leads that are just somebody asking you a question that you could have put in the details. Right. And so I find I'm chasing a lot of leads where people, I could have just given them the information in the ad and, and I, they aren't good leads. So I've, tr I've definitely tried this both in Landmoto and in on Facebook and more information brings better leads. More information equals better leads. And more sales. I definitely and have, have so many more sales from longer, more detailed property descriptions than I do from the more general, not on Craigslist, but. So the equation would be more information plus better leads equals more sales. Am I doing that wrong? Definitely. Okay. Uh, Berlin Aaron, do you concur? With Mimi. I concur mostly with Mimi. Um, I, I do tend to put more information in my land moto ads um, and I get a high quality of lead from land moto. Um, and I, a lot of those leads actually do convert. Um, I kind of disagree on the Facebook side. And I know this discussion isn't wholly like really Facebook, but, and I only degree, disagree for our business because what works for Mimi works for Mimi. You know what I mean? So I'm not like saying that, you know, you're wrong, <laughs> but um, uh, like Facebook, when we've put less information, it's worked out better. Now I will agree the leads aren't the quality, but um, I found that people on Facebook are, they don't read, you know, basically like the ad on Facebook, they read what's above the fold to use kind of an old, you know, printing kind of uh, thing, or I guess it's still a web applicable thing, but um, because I would make these big ads on Facebook and put like all the information, you know, and what falls below the fold, I would end up answering again and again and again on Messenger. Um, cause people just don't read, but you know, I, out of those high quantity of leads, they would still result in a sale. So I guess it just depends on what, you know, how you want to approach it. You know, like I said, she's not wrong. It's just different. You know, well, I, mean? I applaud you for, for, you know, even just you know, disagreeing with Mimi out of just I like know. Is that drone? Or, right. Hold on. <laughs> You're like, wait a second. <laughs> what do I hear about my home? Um, so Mimi, how would you respond to that as far as the Facebook side of it? I do find that some people just don't read right and they ask those same questions, which is fine. But um, a lot of them do. Some do read, some don't. But I'm finding on the short leads, they're just not working as well. I'm just getting questions that I could have given them. They're just, they're just better leads on yeah. Facebook. Okay. More info, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Big Papa, Tay Litchfield, what's your take? You know, um, on Landmoto, I can't say we do too much different compared to Craigslist. I mean, we might have a little bit more general information about the property. Um, compared to Craigslist, but for the most part, uh, we're just providing kind of general information, zoning, but I'm not getting overly detailed into anything. And uh, we still have a really good uh, sales rate off Land Moto. I get a ton of leads. Uh, people are selling on there constantly. I don't know. Uh, I do feel like Land Moto, if you're going to go big and detailed, that's probably the better place to do it compared to another platform. Yeah. So Scott Todd, what's, what's your take and do you have any analytics on this or is it all just 
sort of uh, intuitive. Wait, you're on, you're on mute, Scott. Sorry, sorry. I've never done any analytics on whether it's a long ad or a short ad. I've never done, done anything like the, the length. But what I can tell you is that um, I think that the fact that, that the buyer on there is a more sophisticated land buyer, right? There's, there's people on there that are looking, they, they kind of know what they're looking for. It's not like, see on Craigslist, the thing about Craigslist is that really, you know, when you think about how people find land on Craigslist, you know, they can go specifically looking for land. That's not uncommon for them to do. However, there's a pattern interrupt that is taking place on, on there because theoretically they could be on there looking at other things. Like they could be looking at RVs and they type into the search engine RV search engine, mean Craigslist search engine, and they type in RV. So all of a sudden they're looking for RVs. And then because you used RV in your uh, description, bam, you pop up to the top. Okay. Well, when that happens now it's a pattern interrupt, meaning that, I wasn't expecting land to pop up. So now I'm an unsophisticated buyer. I don't even know that, that it's even possible to buy land for no money or for low money down, you know, and owner finance it. People still think you have to have a bank and good credit and all this other stuff to go buy land. They don't even realize. So that pattern interrupt becomes kind of like, what, wow, what it, how affordable is this? You know, when they get over to Landmoto, we kind of have already a pattern interrupted them. You know, th these are people that are, are coming to the site. They're specifically looking for land. They have Googled something. I mean, there's many different ways that they come to Landmoto. One, one is that they've Googled something uh, and, and the SEO kicks in. So may, maybe they're certain uh, searching for, you know, Castilla County land. We pop up there or a specific listing pops up there. And, you know, in what, what you want to do is you want to, to me, you want to add more detail in there because this is somebody that's already sophisticated about the process of buying the land. You know, they've gone through and they know what they want. They've searched it somehow, whether it's on Google, in our own search engine, or on, um, um, or they've gone in and said, "Hey, I want land in in this county or, or this specific place." So they've searched it out somehow. Now they're looking for more detail, so that because they're more sophisticated, you know, there's then it becomes two approaches, right? Like you could. To me, I would want to give them more information. And the reason I would want to give them more information is because ultimately um, from the user experience, I think it's a better experience. So I'm talking from like the Landmoto side of me now is saying from the user experience, I think you want to give them more information because it just makes it friendlier for them. On the other side, you know, if, you, if your goal is to kind of uh, pit, pillage pillage them and try to get their email address, well, then you want to leave some mystery into it, like a more mystery. Um, but to me, if you do like whatever you do, I would say provide more information because they are more sophisticated and then they will raise their hand and produce a lead for you. Yeah, I, I like that. And I, I like that idea Then you know, Eric kind of brought it up as well. It's kind of like the difference between going to the, bizarre, right? Or, or uh, the mall and just, you're kind of looking around and seeing what catches your eye. I might go here. I might go there. And, and, you know, versus I definitely want to go to this area here and get clothes. Now, what kind of clothes I get, I don't know what's going to catch my eye necessarily. It might be a, a 10 acre shirt in Colorado. It might be a, a two acre pair of shorts in Arizona, but it's still, close essentially um scott bossman i'd be curious have you ever split tested on land moto and seen which would win as far as it's the same property it's pretty much everything's the same except you give more information you give less information in those two ads i've not done that on land moto i have done that on facebook i would have to agree with mimi that i seem it seems like i get better leads uh, leaving more information on Facebook. Uh, I have not yet done that on Landmoto just because my mindset was that, uh, as everyone has stated, uh, you know, people on Landmoto are looking for land and I want to be as detailed as possible. So I have not split test on Landmoto. Okay. Eric, have you split tested? Um, not side by side. Um, so I will pull ads from time to time and, and rework them. Um, 
but no, I haven't simultaneously run the same property with two completely different ads. Okay. Mimi, have you? Yeah. You have. And yes. what was the result? I, I have definitively tried longer ads versus shorter ads and my longer ads always fare better. Okay. I mean, that's, that's pretty much the definitive marketer's answer. I'm not sure if we need to, to spend more, much more time then on the subject, but Bearland Aaron's kind of got that look on his face. Like, well, I still could I agree. disagree. Oh, you no, agree? I, I totally agree with me because um, I, I shouldn't, I can't say I've specifically side by side split test, but I have front to back split test. Um, and by that, I mean, um, I've gotten a property and while it was brand new, I put it on uh, Land Moto before I had a lot of great copy for it, that sort of thing. I just threw it up there to get it up, right? To get some exposure. And then once I got some, some nice copy for it, maybe filled out some more of the information, um, I went back and deleted that ad and wrote a new long ad for it. And uh, I can say that um, those initial short ads got very little traction and the long ad uh, produced a lot more results than the initial short ad did. So I concur with Mimi. All right, all right, Tate. Yeah, I would, uh, I would agree with them both. You know, that's pretty much what we do too and what we've seen as well. All right, great. And for those of you that aren't familiar with the, the vision of Land Moto, because for a while there was, you know, the land, you know, Lands of America, um, landandfarm.com, what was there, landflip.com. And then Land what happened, landhub.com, CoStar came in, bought all of them, and jacked up the prices. So Scott looked at this and said, this is wrong, and started Land Moto. And um, is, I mean, Scott, what, what's the price difference? Well, I mean, it's really like comparing the apples and oranges ultimately because um, the the lands, as we call them, the you know land watch, land land and farm, lands of whatever, they don't have really unlimited packages, um, so they they teeter it based on the number of properties you have, which is kind of cool. I mean, it's it's cool. However, uh, my my old plan with land and farm used to be unlimited properties for fifty dollars a month. Okay, unlimited for fifty dollars a month. And then all of a sudden they came in, they're like, hey, no, you can't do that anymore. You can't do unlimited. In fact, um, we're going to limit you. You can have, like for me, it was 50 properties. I had 50 properties on there. I actually had like 60. And they're like, well, our package is either you can go for 50 or you can go for, I think, 75 or 100. And I'm like, okay, well, what's that going to be? And immediately it went from like $50 a month to 180 a month. And then uh, a year ago, when they contacted me to try to get me back, it was now for 50 properties, it was $660 a month uh, for 50 properties. So again, if you're not going to do 50, pro 50 properties up there, well, then the price is going to come down. Uh, Landmoto basically does a couple of different things. One, Landmoto is unlimited properties. You can do unlimited at the platinum plan, which actually gets you on the deal of the week, the email out to the, to the buyers list. Uh, 7,200 people, I think, on there at last count. Um, so it goes out to the buyers list. And um, essentially, the, um, what is it? That's f um, annually is 497 a year, 497 a year. So $41 a month versus, you know, potentially 600 for 50 listings. And I really don't know where their, their lower tier starts at. I think it's, I think you can do something for like 80 bucks a month on, the lands. But I think you're dealing with like 10 properties or maybe five properties. I don't really know the exact amount. But the other thing too to Mark, Mark is that Land Moto isn't is not a um, is not a, a profit center at all. In fact, um, because it's there to support the the land investors, every dollar of revenue that comes in, literally every dollar of revenue that comes in goes back out into advertising. So it's um, the, the, the revenue is deployed back out to, for traffic generation. And then all of the development, all of the, um, the operational cost is all supported by me. 
Um, so what we're doing is we're just trying to drive the traffic back back there and grow the list and grow the grow the number of properties. Today, um, today we have over 850 properties listed on there, and it's continuing to grow every day. We're getting like we're getting nice uh, nice traction on the number of new properties there. The other thing that I really love about about it, and this is why we designed it to be this way is that there obviously is a network for, uh, for wholesale properties. And so when you have a free account with Landmoto, you can actually log in. Uh, so you go create your free account at uh, landmoto.com forward slash pricing. You go there, you create a free account. And when you do that, uh, you will actually be able to see properties that are available for wholesale as well. And so, you know, if you want to buy some land wholesale in a county, you can search by that county, look at just the wholesale properties available and, um, you know, pick up some land wholesale as well. So the, the sales Avenue is not just for retail sales. You can sell potentially to other whole, you know, on a wholesale basis. It's all about moving the money. I mean, you used to, you used to say all the time, like money loves speed. How else do you do it in the land business? Wholesale some, if you need to go, go create more money and go buy some more properties. Yeah. I feel like we should ask, uh, Scott Bossman to, contact Aileen D'Augustine and create a land moto jingle. If you don't want to get screwed by the <laughs> lands. I think she would be more than happy to do that. What's, what, what do you mean? The, what I've noticed, land moto is built around our segment of land, right? The $30,000 and under, uh, specifically what we're marketing towards where um, all the lambs, they put out a monthly report. I don't know if you've ever looked at it. It's very interesting. Whereas our segment, the top states are what, Arizona, uh, uh, New Mexico, Nevada, right? Their top state is Texas. Their market's different than ours. It's much um, more broad and much higher dollar land than what we're selling. And so the, the clientele on land mode is much more tuned to what we're selling. Yeah, no, that's, that's a great point. And I, I love that Scott's adopted the Jeff Bezos model of we're just reinvesting, reinvesting, reinvesting. And one day we'll figure out how to make a profit, right? And for years, everybody was like, scoff, like scoffing at Jeff Bezos, like, you know, this 99 year strategy, uh, um, just long term. And then it kind of worked out, Scott Todd. I mean, I, I guess theoretically it could. However, uh, yeah, like it could, right? Like, but I think I think that, um, and I've had conversations with the lands because the lands, it's the lands in general, like land hub and land flip, they really are all focused on. Um, they're focused really on the, the the realtors, the brokers, right? Like the land brokers. I mean, go go on Land Watch and sort by price. And you'll, you'll notice like they've got properties that are like a hundred million dollar like ranches in Texas. Okay. So, you know, they're, they're not worrying about the individual land investor. In fact, they, they told us very clearly with their price moves, we don't care about you because, you know, a broker who's going to make, you know, sell property for a hundred million dollars, $600 a month for him is nothing, right? Like it's, it's chump change. The commission he's going to get that said, for us, it's a lot of money, you know, like for us, it's a lot of money. And, um, you know, there, there's other, there's other platforms out there in terms of people who are trying to fill the marketplace or fill the void in the marketplace with that. And, you know, I, I think that we have a, a good strategy. I mean, there's one that he charges $200 a month, $200 a month. Okay. Uh, and, and I look at it, I'm like, maybe we should be charging $200 a month, but I don't really want to do that. And the other thing that you're never going to find is you're never going to find um, land investors like us who will be able to get kind of spacing in the, the land's email blast for $41 a month. It's just not going to happen. No, these, these are all really good points. And uh, I think this was a really good round table discussion. And um, it's especially just knowing definitively what is going to work on landmoto.com as far as, you know, the best practices of creating your ad. And, and it's so important when you first start just having that knowledge and not going in blind and not trying to figure it out because look, as I always like to say, you can always make more money, 
but you can't get more time. I mean, this is a tremendous time saving, uh, you know, strategy on, on creating your marketing. So that leads us to, and Eric Peterson is, is heaving a huge sigh of relief because Zeno is not on the round table today. Um, it's time for the tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, maybe a quote, something actionable for the Art of Passive Income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. Mimi Schmidt is taking the gavel. Mimi, what do you got? So I'll send the link. It's kind of different. So I'm okay if you guys make fun of me. I got it in my email from Lead Pages. It's an Excel spreadsheet and it has the, um, all the different holidays in November and December and it has a plan for you to build out your marketing strategy so that you're ahead of the game. Because what I noticed is I think, oh, Black Friday is like in two days. What am I going to do? Right. And so it helps you a month ahead, start to plan out what your strategy is for Black Friday and Small Business Saturday, Cyber Monday, what is some giving something Tuesday. Right. Um, so I'm trying to get to the chat and I'll post it for you guys so you can look at it. You know what? I don't know if it's going to let me on my, oh, here it is. Ah, to everyone. Peace. Okay. So it's stored in a Google Drive. Oh, this is fantastic. So, um, take a look. But we'll, we'll, let, we'll let Eric take a pot shot at it, I'm sure. You can take pot shots at it. You can put the dates in there, too, and there's a timeline in there, too, so you can look at it kind of down with your dates, or you can look at, there's a second tab that kind of has a more visual timeline, too, because um, we have a lot of holidays, so like Black Fridays in less than two weeks, so... I got to make sure I'm ready for any promotions that I want to run coupons or, um, you know, only available today, right. For, for black Friday, get this parcel of land. I got to decide what my, my promotions are going to be and start to have my ad posters and my ad uh, copywriters ready. And then for instance, do I need additional pictures for, uh, for those holidays, right. That are a little different than my normal land pictures for my posting. So it's just, it, you know, it's that time of year raising awareness. Can this you is, see it? I, I see, I, I see Eric squinting. I think it's great. Eric, what do you think? I like it. I mean, it's a useful piece of information. I think uh, we got to make sure to put that link in the, in the show notes so people can get to it. But, uh, but no, it's great. Yeah. You know, what's so funny is, is I can see on Tate's face right now. He's like, who discounts? Like he's like, <laughs> I don't, I, he's like, he's like I, don't put, I don't put anything on sale. It's funny because Eric and I were talking about this this morning. And uh, if anything, I'm raising prices for the holidays. Maybe get uh, the cost of entry a little bit lower, but uh, discounts, smish counts. <laughs> you, you don't think you're going to leave money on the table? Me? No, because I'm raising my prices. Well, you could always use it for urgent to create urgency though. Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, I, I like this calendar. I'm actually going to use it. It's, I think it's called, it came up on mine as the, where'd it go? Holiday hustle. Yeah. yeah the holiday, holiday hustle calendar. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I feel like this should be another round table topic maybe next week as far as how often you should be running, um, you know, big, big specials, right? Because will you be training your buyers list to just wait? Because they know there's another deal coming down the pike, right? Or does it just not matter? It's something to think about. It's another topic. Yeah. Anyways, I think this is a great uh, tip of the week. And uh, I want to thank all the listeners uh, for putting up with all our shenanigans on the Roundtable, Roundtable podcast. And hopefully you're getting a lot of value. If you are, the biggest favor you can do us is just these three little things. You got to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free our $97 Passive Income Launch Kit course. Don't forget, December Flight School is filling up fast. And uh, you got to talk to uh, the Nightcap Meister, Scott Bossman, or the Zen Master, Mike Zeno. Just go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training, have a strategy call with them and they'll, they'll tell you what, uh, what's going to be best for you at this point in your land investing journey. 
All right. Are we, uh, are we doing this? Let's do a mark ready. One, right. One two, two, three. Let, let, let freedom ring. ring. Yeah, my awesome. hat I'm wearing is internet connection. Is, is Telluride. Telluride hat. Awesome. Scott, do you have a good internet connection? He's still not getting it. He's still not getting it. <laughs> he, him and Bearland are like on this sharing the same bandwidth. What what I what I miss? I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm out. See, it's just now coming in, man. How's, You're how's, coming out, man. How slow is your internet connection, bro? <laughs> Is it that low? Is that bad? Well, you're like way behind everybody. I don't know. I don't know. We're laggy here in Wisconsin. We don't get the same signal up here north, up north here. It must freeze, man. Like it must just be cold. That's just cool. like the internet itself just freezes. Yeah. yeah. Everything slows down. Molasses internet. My voice slows down. My movements. Dial up. That's why I need to fast because my digestive system slows down. So uh, not good. Yeah, I mean that reminds me, like, you know, boot camp is coming up, and it's going to be interesting to see Scott get off that plane and just thaw out. Yes, right? <laughs> that's going to be really fun to watch. Like, we should record that. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Up. Like, where's he going to thaw out at? I don't understand. <laughs> San Antonio will be way warmer than than where he lives now. Listen, man, I go there and I freeze. I don't know what. To... <laughs> yeah, I'm He's bringing a jacket. San Antonio. Too cold, man. I'm um, bringing shorts. It's like fifties. It's gonna be beautiful yeah, I, weather. I, it's terrible weather. I thought. I, I swear, Mimi brought her kids, and she's like, I think it was Mimi's kids, and and they were like, I'm like, Mimi, where are your kids? And she's like, Oh, they're in the pool. And I'm like, Are you crazy? She's like, <laughs> Walk there, and it's heated too. And I'm like, No, you, you can't pay me enough, man. <laughs> That's right. Those Schmidt kids aren't soft. Like, they were so. Uh, Floating oh, river that resort. That resort was awesome. Pretty, I'm pretty sure that uh, before this podcast, you you referred to Tate and Bearland and myself as being <laughs> soft and smelly. <laughs> it's look this this podcast is going to start devolving. Thanks everyone uh, for coming on. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Right. Let freedom ring. <laughs> Bye.